Skip it up and that up. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Rich of Review Tech USA, and this is a video that I've wanted to make for a long time. And this is a blast from the past for me, not from my childhood. Yes, obviously from my childhood too, but from when I started first started doing Review Tech USA full time. Now, if you remember way, way, way back in the day, um, I had an HDMI mod for my Sega Genesis. It was really terrible. The original one only took a composite to HDMI converter. We put it inside the Sega Genesis. It sure, yeah, it's convenient because even back then there was a lot of TVs five years ago that didn't even have a composite on them if you had a flat panel high def TV but it didn't really improve the video at all. If anything, kind of made the video worse than just going composite right into a TV. But the convenience factor was there, but there was a lot of people who, who criticized that video saying you're not really improving the video. If anything, you're making it worse and you were right. So my father and I went back to the drawing board and in 2014, we took the RGB signal that the Sega Genesis outputs and we took that and converted that with HDMI and this Genesis, which is pretty much pristine, there's a couple of light scuffs on it. I even buffed this thing, I've babied this console, and I know people are probably freaking out right now because I we mutilated basically a mint true Model 1 Sega Genesis. You could tell by the logo, it has two tones of paint in it, the high definition audio, this has the better audio circuitry in it. We HDMI modded this with RGB and the picture on this thing is absolutely amazing. Our plans were to sell it. I'll explain later why we never did, but this is mine. This works and it's absolutely amazing. And I, once my father told me that he still had this, I had to make a video on it. So there's many people out there that are gonna say, Rich, all you did was take an RGB to HDMI converter box. You plopped it in there and that's it. You called it a day. I wish it was that easy, but it sure as hell wasn't. There was a lot of things we had to do to make the RGB to HDMI work off of one single power supply to get clear audio out of it. It wasn't as simple as it seems. So yes, first and foremost, yeah, yeah, there is an RGB, a SCAR RGB to HDMI converter box that is inside of here. There's a bunch of generic ones on Amazon. They all look the same. They're under different brands. They all come from China. But yes, of course, that is what makes the RGB turn into HDMI or upscales to 1080p HDMI and sends it out to the TV. But you couldn't just shove that in there, use one power supply or use the original Sega Genesis power supply and call it a day. We actually had to remove the two linear regulators in here and put one switching regulator to make it power both the Sega Genesis and the RGB to HDMI converter. The only downside to that is, the plus side, you can only need one power supply. Cool. Downside is you can't use the original Sega Genesis power supply. It introduces hum to the audio and it's, it's pretty bad. But when you use a switching power supply, it's clean, there's no hum to the audio, the picture's crystal clear. So it's a sacrifice that had to be made, but the convenience of just using one power supply to power both the HDMI converter box and the Genesis is a huge win. Now the original Sega Genesis Model 1, which this is, the AV out that it comes with, which is still working on this, by the way. That's the other thing we made sure to do is that if you don't want to use HDMI and you want to use this with an old CRT TV, you get the original Sega Genesis AV out cables and it'll work with that. But the other thing we had to do is get stereo audio right from the audio processor inside of the Sega Genesis. So we had to add in a stereo op amp and to make sure that stereo output comes from the HDMI output. And on top of it too, we didn't just steal it or siphon it from the headphone jack. We actually got it from the audio circuitry inside the Sega Genesis. So you could have the volume all the way down here and it won't affect the volume outside of here. We also had to put stereo op amps in here to make sure there was a good level of sound coming out of the HDMI output. And it is, it's crystal clear stereo audio that comes out of here. So it's not just mono audio, which is another huge plus. Now, because this is an original, true first model Sega Genesis, this has something as you see right here, which had a serial port. Now, the serial port, I don't think was used for anything on the Sega Genesis. So 
what we did, so there was an actual HDMI out, as you see there, we didn't have to drill anything into the case, do any kind of magic with that, is we just got a short HDMI extension cable and it fit perfectly, as you see, where that serial port was. So we desoldered that, just put the HDMI, the, the square part of the HDMI extension cable with the female part of the HDMI port right where the extension was, and it just fits there perfectly. It looks like it was meant to be part of the Sega Genesis, and since that port was used for nothing, we just got rid of it. Again, I know to purists that is blasphemy, but I think it was a smart move. Also too, we got rid of to reduce power consumption and to remove noise from the video. It removed all the noises you're gonna see. I'm gonna show a bunch of gameplay in a minute. Uh, we also got rid of the RF modulator here. I mean, even if you're gonna play this on an old CRT, you're gonna use the AV out. That's why we made sure it still worked perfectly. You're not gonna use RF out. It consumed more power. It added noise to the picture. And once we got rid of it, the picture became crystal clear and there's just no need for it in 2019. Again, purists may be angry at that, but are you really gonna use RF? Are you seriously gonna use it? So in the end, a lot of people are probably wondering, Rich, why didn't you sell this Sega Genesis mod? It seems awesome, or at least you'll see that it is awesome. What was your reasoning for not going through with it and you know having a bunch of people send you their Sega Genesis and modding them for and having them pay you? Uh, first reason. The RGB to HDMI box, the converter box that's in here, SCART RGB to HDMI only outputs widescreen. Now, the argument, the valid argument that can be made, oh, Rich, if you hook it up to a uh, high def or 4K TV, you could always change the aspect ratio, but not every TV does that, and the option should be built into the mod, and it should be dependent on someone's TV, and I wasn't comfortable selling it when it can only output 16 by 9. Also, too, with these RGB to HDMI boxes, they don't do a true 1080p. It's like a weird resolution. It's like 1919 by 1079 or 1920 by 1078, which most 4K TVs and high-def TVs would just be like, all right, it's not full 1080p, but we'll still output it at 1080p, no big deal. But once in a while, some TVs just won't accept the signal and it won't work. So how could my father and I, in good faith, sell these to people and not be 100% sure that it will work on their television? Most TVs it does work, but more like this LG monitor right here I use to monitor myself when I film has HDMI input. You could use it as a TV too if you want to. Won't work with this. Just you won't see a picture. So... That was the other reason why too. And the labor that was involved to make this work, to make everything work together, it was mind blowing. And the price we would have had to have asked isn't, isn't would have been not been reasonable. But in the at the end of the day, I'm glad that I own this thing. I'm glad I have a working one. And it's an interesting piece of Review Tech USA history. So now we're gonna take a look at a bunch of Sega Genesis games and you're gonna see how damn clear the picture actually is. It's pretty awesome. Take a look. So at the end of the day, do I recommend doing this to your Sega Genesis? No. 
there's way too many other alternatives out there. There's companies selling cables that I don't think look as good as this, but if you want the convenience of taking the RGB signal and converting it to HDMI, that I know like Hyperkin sells a cable. It's not great, but they sell a cable. There's also the FPGA options by Analog. I absolutely love their consoles. They act like original Sega Genesis hardware and have insanely crystal clear video and audio. So no, this idea is antiquated now. There's there was no there's no reason for us to be like, hey, we should try to do this again and sell it. It's just it's just not worth it. There's way too many other options out there to play Sega Genesis games and Super Nintendo games, so on and so forth in the HD and 4K and well now 8K era. But this is still such a great piece of kit to have. I'll never sell it. And with using the uh, eight bit to wireless controller and the HDMI out, a Genesis probably from 1989, because this is truly one of the originals that came out in the States, can still hold it down in the modern era and still give you a gorgeous picture on a huge 4K or 1080p TV. And I absolutely love that. I'll never sell this thing. This is Richard Review Tech USA signing out. Have a good one. Thank you.